Good afternoon, it's David and Chris from Drive. And today we have special guest, John Belmonte, CEO of Auto Vitals with us. And kind of a rare occasion, but we wanna talk about it just for a brief minute before we go into the show here with John and Auto Vitals. But it's the first time in over two years that Chris and I and a few others have been together at our office in Drive. So it's so refreshing to be back in person, face to face and everything. And it just uh, really puts the importance to the Drive Expo that's coming up, where we're all going to be face-to-face, -to -face, uh, back together, getting to talk to people, interaction and stuff. And it, it's going to be so great. So we just can't wait to do that. And I know John and team at Auto Vitals will be out at our Drive Expo. So we're excited about that. So let's get on to the show today now. So John, I know there's a lot of things that Auto Vitals does, digital workflow, vehicle inspections and stuff. Let's talk about some of the, the reasons why shops want to start talking about this and getting involved with this type of technology and what it means for their business. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Um, thanks very much for having me, by the way. And I appreciate you guys actually coming in the office for this. And uh, Chris, for you wearing that super fancy shirt for me. So I, uh, <laughs> I genuinely appreciate that. <laughs> uh, I expect to see more of the same at uh, Drive Expo. So, um, so here's here's the um, here's the way we kind of think about software and technology. A couple of things that we think about for shops, and what I've heard from lots of shops over the last bunch of years. Um, most shops today, you know, you can't operate a shop without a shop management system or a point of sale, right? And uh, it's kind of like. You need a building to have a shop. You need a point of sale to have a shop. Over 80%, maybe 85% of shops use some type of technology like that. And what a point of sale does is it does a really great job of all those core operational functions in the shop. Get your parts ordered in inventory, tie into the labor guides, get people paid, accounting, right? Repair orders, like everything that you just do to kind of make the business run. And what Auto Vitals does and what folks like us do is um, we add another layer of technology on top of that. We like to call it a shop success solution. And that's a dopey term that some college boy me made up like a year ago. <laughs> but, but what it does is it kind of represents all the software you need not to run those core operations of your shop, but to grow profitably. Right. So when I think about profitable growth, it's are you selling customers or are you encouraging customers to buy a lot more work? Right. So shop customers and motorists come in and are you really developing a sense of trust so they, they buy the most work possible? That's what a, a digital vehicle inspection does. Or are you making your shop so much more efficient that you can get 20% more labor hours or 20% more jobs done with the same number of bays or the same number of technicians. And that's what a really good piece of workflow software does. And once you got those things really humming, then you really want to maximize your car count. You want to get your retention up. So you need a good like CRM tool or maybe a loyalty or rewards program, or you want to get new customers in to round out the folks, either the new capacity you created or round out the folks who um, maybe have moved on or left town or whatever the case is. And that's where you need websites and digital marketing and a lot of great things that, that you guys do. So that's, that's how we tend to think about two sides of the software and technology landscape is you got the shop management system or point of sale and it's got its job, but you also need this shop success solution to grow profitably, open more shops, things like that. All right. Now, playing a little bit of devil's advocate in a way. Um, yeah. you know, let's say you've got a shop owner that they use their shop management system. They do inspections, but they're using you know clipboard and paper, and they print out their ROs, all that kind of stuff, and it works for them. Why? Why should they move to a digital solution? Yeah, it's a great question. So. Um, it it works for them, but it doesn't, I, I, I would argue that it does not work as well as it could, right? So, so if you think about, if you think about the human behavior side of a customer coming into a shop, 
right? Um, I'll, I'll give you I'll, I'll give you an example for myself, right? So you look at me. I'm sure you're shocked, but I can't fix my own car, and I don't know it. You know, I don't know enough to fix my car. Here's what the call sounds like today when it's a paper inspection, right? I get the call from the service advisor. Uh, hey, Mr. Belmonte, blah, 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 blah. We checked 20 things, blah, 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 blah. There's five things wrong. We really recommend you fix three. I'm going to explain them to you, but you have no idea what I'm talking about or if you know it's true. And it's $3,000. That's hard. That's very difficult for me. I'm, I'm, um, I'm uneducated. I'm uninformed. Um, it's not that I don't trust. It's not that I mistrust you as a shop, but I, if I'm newish to the shop and I have no information, um, I don't necessarily trust you yet. Right. So I'm looking at my phone thinking, should I get another price on this? How do I even know that the brake cam is cracked or whatever the case is? What a digital inspection does is a couple of things. It creates a whole bunch of consistency on the shop side. So there's no pencil whipping, right? Or there's no rushing through a digital inspection. Like you go through and you got to check every different thing, right? And then um, at the same time, you've got um, the final sort of inspection that goes out to the customer or the consumer. And now I'm sitting there and it's like Amazon, right? On Amazon, I go, you guys are in the same, same boat as me. I should, I should send you this thing. I have this amazing device. It's basically what I use to kind of shave my head down. And it's got a vacuum on it and it's got all this stuff. And I found it on Amazon and there's a ton of pictures and there's a whole bunch of educational content in there, maybe some raising ratings and reviews. And by the time I'm ready to buy that thing, like I am an educated consumer. Nobody called me. Nobody tried to sell me anything. And by the time I was ready to purchase, like I was really comfortable and in control. And that's what you want for a shop customer, right? You want, you want for the shop customer to, when you call, as a when the, the service advisor calls, you want them to feel really comfortable. You want them to feel like they're in the driver's seat. And it's like, yep, I watched those. I, I looked at the pictures you sent me. Thanks for circling the what's dirty or the cracks. And thanks for sending me educational content. Explains why these things are really important. Uh, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to talk. I saw it all. It's clear what's going on with the car. Either, you know, what do you recommend? Or I had a question about this. It's it, it it you turn you turn your customers into buyers as opposed to your service advisor having to sell them. And that's why, I mean, you know, it's it's virtually proven over and over. If you're using a fully featured DVI or digital vehicle inspection system, you're following the best practices, you're looking at the reporting and make sure everybody does what they're supposed to do, like you will see at least a 20 to 30 percent increase in, in ARO. And I, you know, I've talked to tons of customers recently and they're like, yep. We doubled our ARO. It seems crazy, but at this point, I think most shops kind of understand this is something that you need either today or soon. Um, and now a, a lot of the questions just where do I get it? What's you know what's the best way to do it? That kind of thing. Well, you know, there's a big point that you're talking about over here that I see, John, and that's um, it's value. When you sell service as your product, that's our, you know, parts I always consider is a byproduct of what we do in an automotive shop. Right. And parts are a byproduct of it. You got to sell them, but you're really selling service. And when you're selling service, you got to sell the value to your customer. What's the value of the service that you're providing? Right. And, you know, you brought up a point in there at the beginning of this. I heard this, you know, car broke, fixed car, $3,000. Right. But in the customer's viewpoint, there's no value in there. That, you know, we've always taught from day one to drive, put a detailed story, paint the picture and put it out there so the customer can make an informed decision. And when you paint the picture correctly, their decision is always going to be to fix the car. It's always going to be prices out of the question because they don't question it because they see the value of what you're doing. Right. This is what I see your system helping on one one aspect of what it does is it helps paint that picture to the customer that smooths the sales cycle. There may be still some sales involved to it, but it's not saying, now give me $3,000. It's saying, I showed you everything that was wrong with your car. It's going to cost $3,000, but that $3,000 is well spent by the way you can see through what we've done here. That's right. And, you know, it's like any transaction. It's not, it's not black and white. It's not... Uh, that a, a customer wants a car that drives. Yes, the car want, the customer wants a car that drives that's safe uh, and they don't want to spend too much money. 
But in the end, what the customer really wants is they want to feel like they didn't get ripped off. They want to feel like they made a good decision. They want to feel respected, right? They want to feel like they're working with people they can trust because they are, you know, look, most of us as, as motorists or, or shop customers, we are kind of vulnerable. Right. And not to get all like soft and squishy on it, but that's that's what consumer behavior is. And again, what you know, someone like Amazon, I'm not suggesting that we all try to build our businesses and our service models and our, you know, try to be the next Amazon, but there is a lot to be learned from, you know, companies like that. And and it is what not all, but most customers are coming to expect, right? Is to be able to transact like that. Well, I was gonna say one other thing that I see on here, and I hate to see it. The media doesn't help the automotive industry in the best ways either. And the only reason I say that is, is I don't know how many times I've seen it on different social networks. I've seen it on news. There's some reporter that says, look, there's nothing going on in our town today that's worth uh, going out and creating controversy in our town. So let's go put uh, a hidden camera on a car and let's go visit a few auto shops and see if we can uh, catch them doing something that we we would set them up for this. Right. That image is out there. So the mm -hmm. consumers see it all the time and it's nothing good for our industry, but by digital vehicle inspections and the pictures and the way you do this, this is a tool to fight that to show, look, we're honest, we're true. This is what's really going on with I'm your car. Sending you a picture of it. I wouldn't be sending you a picture of this if it wasn't, you know, actually the case. And no, you're right. I mean, you're right. The media preys on, you know, the fears of, of ordinary folks. And, yep. and especially where it, there is this sort of difference in information levels, right? And expertise and, and that kind of stuff. And um, this is, a, I mean, in my opinion, it's the best way to, to fight against it. So John, you mentioned something earlier about using best practices. And, and you and I talked uh, a little while ago about that and how that affects actually the shop's return on investment in a product like a digital vehicle inspection. Let's talk a little bit about what some of those best practices might be and how yeah. shops can get the most out of their investment in auto vitals. Yeah, so um, it's like anything. Um, if you think about it, the your, your profit and loss, the amount of work that you're selling, um, the effectiveness of a tool like digital vehicle inspection, you know, a lot of times it kind of comes down to a formula. And part of the formula, if you think about it at the most basic level is, are all of my technicians using digital inspection tools to inspect every vehicle and create a digital inspection, right? And if Bob's doing it and Fred's not, all of a sudden you're not going to get half of the benefit, right? Let's just say, you know, those are the numbers to be super round. Well, now you've got Bob creating a bunch of digital inspections, right? And that's called the inspection rate. Pretty simple, right? What percentage of the inspectable cars are getting a digital inspection? Well, then what has to happen is um, either Sue at the front desk is sending those out by text message to the motorist or the co consumer, or um, you know, Bill is not sending them out. Well, all of a sudden if Bill's not sending them and Sue is, now all of a sudden you're down another like 50%, right? That's a piece of data that, it's, it's important that you're able to look at. So part of what I'm getting at is there's some pretty basic metrics to understand who's, who's following the best practices in the shop and who's not. And that's, you know, that can be a hard conversation, right? I'm a, if I'm a business owner or a business manager, it's hard walking in and saying, hey, gee, you're pencil whipping or uh, gee, you're doing this or not doing it. The beauty of it though, is if you've got a report that's sitting there, you go out and say, hey, you know what? Um, this per, you know, uh, your your fellow technician, they're selling tons and tons of work or fellow uh, service advisor, they're able to send tons and tons of work. And a big part of the reason is, look, they're doing this and you're doing this. Um, let's just, you know, let's try it for a couple of weeks. And then next thing you know, like all of a sudden everyone's doing it and everyone's making more money and everyone's happy, free lunches, you know, and, and the like. Customers are happy. Um, the retention rates go up and, you know, in the end, everybody wants a successful shop. I'll give you another example. It's one of those stories. I love the story because it's pretty organic, right? Um, so we've got um, every, every client we have has a dedicated um, customer success advisor, right? So it's not the person you call and say, hey, um, I don't see this RO. It's the person you call to make sure you're using the tools and getting, you know, real results and profitable growth out of it or, or more likely they call you. 
And we had two service advisors in a shop, all right? Sue and Bill, like I was saying, they were doing the exact same thing. Really high inspection rates, high inspection scent rates, the same number of pictures, like you wanna get 10 or 15 pictures in there. The service advisor needs to edit the pictures, like put an arrow and point at, you know, the defect or what's dirty or, you know, just the stuff that makes it more personalized and more um, transparent and trustworthy. And Sue's ARO was 365 and Bill's ARO was like 255 and could not figure out what the difference was. Well, it turns out that Bill was an eager beaver and he would send out the text message to the consumer and then immediately would call up and say, um, hey, you know, I just sent you a digital inspection. Let's talk about, you know, what's going on. And he was getting some benefit out of the tools, but what he wasn't getting was he wasn't allowing, what Sue was doing was allowing the message to sit there for five minutes. Like the consumer or the motorist would open up the message, would read all the content on their own, become comfortable and confident. Then Sue would call. And now the person's ready to buy instead of Bill who was calling to sell, right? Yeah. Like, you know, it's it's a little thing like that where, you know, our founder, Uwe Kleinschmidt, I mean, he, the guy is, the guy is a nut when it comes to shop success, really making a big impact uh, on the industry and making a big impact just for shops. Like, you know, to the point where he's a guy who would get frustrated if you're not using the tools the way they're supposed to. Now, I'm not saying that's, you know, the way we want to, um, the way we want to do it, but um, you know, those are the types of best practices, making sure everybody in the in the office or in the shop is using the tools the way they're supposed to, um, you know, making sure you, we call it motorist research time. Um, and then, you know, just those types of of of, uh, of reporting and insights and features and the and the dedicated you know support, like that's the difference between like having digital vehicle inspections and really using it and relying on it and getting all the benefit out of it, right? I'm, I'm thrilled that a lot of shops now realize they need to have it. Um, I just would like to see more and more shops getting all the benefit out of it that they possibly can. Um, and that's where, you know, our, like our working together and doing things is great, right? Because the more folks who are reminding shop managers and shop owners, you know, here's how to perfect your business um, operations and here's how to get, you know, the most out of all the different tools and investments and things that you're doing in your shop. Um, you know, the more that folks like us work hand in hand, the more that shop owners end up winning. That's great. Okay. <clears throat> so another question I have, John, just on this, because we you talked to, there's a majority of people that know they need to go to this or they're already gone to this and everything. Um, I think one of the biggest fears for those that haven't gone to it yet is I'm going to have to train. My guys are not going to embrace it. They're not going to walk around with tablets. I can't even get them to uh, look at a phone, more or less, go and, and go through there and do this kind of technology. They're scared of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, here's, here's what I will tell you. Again, it kind of goes back to what we were saying before. A bit of this is human nature and human behavior, right? So some folks are just more likely to say, no, I don't think we want to do that. I don't want to change. Um, I will tell you whether, whether it comes to digital vehicle inspection, so you're selling more work, or it comes to something like workflow, which is managing kind of the flow of vehicles, like the intake, the inspection, what's on the um, you know, what's in the bay, what's not on the bay or on the left, who's doing the work. Um, in the end, I think it comes down to two things. What, what all employees or all sort of people on a team want for the most part is they want to work in an environment where um, it's kind of under control, right? Like one of the biggest reasons, like one of the biggest things going on in our industry now is it's hard to find tech talent. It's hard to find um uh, you know, service advisor, it's hard to keep people. And in the end, what we find is the shops who really keep their team members are the ones who are making more money, are working for a shop that they feel confident is going to be, you know, successful for the next year, two years, five years, you know, whatever the case is. Um, and is not, you know, is not a madhouse. It's not chaos, right? A lot of people end up leaving because they're like, I can't take it anymore. This is chaos. This is crazy, right? And I will tell you the, the, the best way to sort of turn all that chaos into control or to make more money 
or to, to raise the satisfaction level of all your team members, software is a big part of it, right? Software is just an enabler. I mean, to be clear, and I, I, I tell folks all the time, like software doesn't make you more profitable. Software doesn't turn the chaos into control. It doesn't do all those things. It doesn't help your people get paid more, make them happier. It's just an enabler, right? Mm -hmm. You still need great leadership in the shop. You still need great management process, pro, uh, um, processes, uh, even workflow, right? Like, or you, you still need a great process in your shop, but I will tell you, really good software is going to make you more efficient, right? It just, yeah. it just will. You just, you want to take that great process and kind of replicate it into a piece of software. And it's the same thing with digital vehicle inspection. The other thing for inspections is, um, you know, I rarely, I don't typically hear that folks, that shops, uh, employees say, gee, I don't want to use digital inspections. Um, the only time I'll hear that is they'll say, well, it takes longer. It takes <laughs> longer. So, so I don't, um, sorry to monopolize the time here, but I, I don't, I don't make it my business to debate shop owners, uh, or shop employees much, but this is one I like to get into because, um, the way that an inspection is done in a shop today might be a little bit faster than doing a digital inspection, but that's because it's typically not that complete. Right. right. If you do, if you do a world-class paper inspection where you're really checking every single thing, you're writing down tons of notes. Uh, maybe you're taking some pictures. I don't know how that works with paper, um, but you're doing all that. It will take you the same amount of time, probably even take you longer to do the paper than it will digital. So you, you got to be competing. You got to be comparing apples and apples, right? You can't compare like a quick pencil whipped you know, not very information rich inspection with a digital inspection. You got to compare, you know, like for like. So, yeah, that that's absolutely true. And, you know, one of the things you said reminded me of something else that's related to a common problem shops have right now, which is finding technicians, hiring, attracting good technicians, keeping good technicians, that kind of thing. And I want to point out to our audience two really important points. One is that good employees thrive in structure. Bad employees thrive in chaos. Mm -hmm. That's just the truth. Yep. All right. The second thing is that the younger technicians who are becoming the majority of the technicians in the workforce are looking for shops that have good technology in place these people grew up with technology unlike me <laughs> and um so that's important to them if you want to hire good quality younger technicians you need to have your technology up to snuff right. it's there's no two ways about it it's not optional if you want those people to work for you you need what I'll, I'm just going to say is a modern shop, right? Yeah, it's true. I mean, us, us veteran workers, um, you know, that's a nice way to put it. Yeah. yeah. People who, who, whose careers are a little longer um, than some of these uh, new folks, you know, we have relatively high pain thresholds, right? When it comes to work, you're 40 or under 35, 30 and under like, no way you walk no. in, it's a madhouse. Like you don't want to put up with that. And, um, and, and look, look, we need to attract more young people into the industry. And I do think that having solid technology, again, you know, working in a shop, it's not going to be about the technology, but it's a big enabler, right? Yes. It's yes. one thing. It's, it's what it can enable within your shop. So a hundred percent, this kind of switches the conversation back from the tech, uh, the hiring and stuff, Chris, but what I want to talk to you about it is Look, it's a customer service that you're doing over here. This yes. is a customer service and it helps the shop. And I'm going to just give one example right now. A customer brings their vehicle to your shop. They need to get an oil change on it service. They're going on a family vacation. They're looking for you to make sure that their car is safe and dependable and reliable. Mm -hmm. um, you go through there and as you're talking a few minutes ago, the difference between non-digital and paper inspections and some may get pencil lift or something like that. A technician goes through there, does the oil change in the car, does an inspection, turns it back to the customer, they go down the road. Okay, they're all happy and everything else. They get 300 miles down the road on a family vacation, 
and they hear a squealing coming from the brakes. And then they pull over to a shop that they're not familiar with, out of town person, and they have to have that shop do an extensive repair on the brakes. Whose fault is it? Well, the first person they're going to blame is the shop they just came from, your, their local shop. You didn't tell me about it. Yeah, whether you've seen it or not, or you could predict it or not, the first thing in their mind is you did this to me. Right. And that's how you lose most of your good customers. And what really happens in that is good customers don't complain. They just, they just go away. Back. Right, right. They, they just go away and they don't come back. That's how you lose most of your good customers. They don't complain. Good customers don't complain. They just don't come back. Right. Well, and remember what I was saying before. If you call up and walk through the six things that are wrong with their vehicle, right? Again, they're hearing like not, 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 oil, not, not, not. And, and it's very, there's a good chance that you may have identified it. You might have even identified it for them. And it turns out that they're not going to remember and they're still going to end up blaming you. Right. But if you sent them a digital inspection, I guarantee you they're going to go back and they'll be like, oh man, I missed, I, I really, I should have done that. Right. Right. So That's it's absolutely it's both, correct. It's both, it's both the sides of you got to make sure that these inspections are complete. Right. You know, customers, they won't feel like as long as you're not putting the hard sell on them. And as long as you're always giving them good advice, like, yep, yeah, you really should do this now. Now you can wait on these things. The more you educate them, right, the better they're going to feel about the experience. And because they they want to feel informed. They want to feel you know safe. They want to feel like they're, they've got this trusted relationship. So. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so on the points there, uh, you know, we're looking at efficiency. We, I know we're getting close to the time here, but I just want to kind of look at it. We're looking at a customer service, improves efficiency. Um, we got a brief few minutes here, but how does it improve communications within the shop? Because that's where yeah. most things break down. That's where most problems and upsets within the shop and between staff members start. Yeah. So, um, so the biggest inefficiencies, the biggest inefficiencies in the shop today are a couple of fold. One is um, communication between the service advisor, the front desk, and then in the back in the the back of the shop. And um, so that usually today is people running back and forth, um, miss you know lack of information, misinformation, um, you know, which leads to technicians sitting around and waiting or um, vehicles sitting in bays or up on a lift or, you know, or, or having to build a whole bunch of buffer time into the schedule, not taking as many appointments as you can, or just not being able to give uh, customers uh, good information as to like, here's what's going on, here's when your vehicle is going to be ready, um, all that kind of stuff. So imagine, imagine a system where at the front, you've got the service advisor, and the service advisor has, uh, you know, a view where they're able to look at all the stages. They've got two views. They can look at all the stages a vehicle might be in, the intake, the inspection. Did I lose you guys? I'm going to keep going. Um, you've got this, um, uh, the ability to say, okay, move this vehicle from, you know, intake into inspection. Move it for inspection uh, into waiting for parts. Right, and the and the um, the the technician has got a tablet, and rather than having to run back and forth or look at a board or race things or you know whatever the case is, um, what they're doing is they look at their tablet and they say, oh, here's what's next up. Next up, do this inspection, or next up, oh, I'm going to answer this question. There's a chat, right, that goes on from the service advisor to the technicians, or. Uh, I'm going to, oh, provide me a picture of this or, oh, what was going, remind me what was going on. Can you provide an update? All these updates are automated through a, um, uh, through a really easy to use interface. And what it does is it reduces all the downtime that we we're talking about, uh, or the buffer time, the waiting time, the misunderstandings, the, um, needing to get communication out to the, the actual customer, all of that gets completely automated. Right. So we had a shop. Um, I, I love the story. We had a shop and the service advisor was wearing one of those little things on your those sports things on your wrist. And um, and what they did and they, they would take like 15,000, 16,000 steps a day, which my understanding is that's a lot. And um, as soon as they implemented auto vitals, service advisor was able to spend most of their time up at the front desk on the phone, 
uh, dealing with customers, dealing with folks, and then just sort of just uh, dispatching work, tracking progress on work, and uh, making appointments and all that kind of stuff. They could get a ton more work done. Um, and the technicians in the back were able to get a ton more work done. That service advisor went from 15 or 16,000 steps a day to like 5,000 steps a day. In fact, the, the owner of the shop uh, was a little bit mad because he said the service advisors are wanted a 20 minute break every day to be able to go on a walk to, to get their steps back up to whatever it is, eight or 10,000. So um, again, I this is the area that is probably least um, known about and makes by far the biggest impact on a shop's performance, on their profitability, on the satisfaction of its employees, um, team members, and then also on the on the satisfaction of the um, the customers who are coming in. So, all right, with that, uh, I don't know what happened to Dave and Chris, and I may not even be on anymore. But uh, it is one o'clock Pacific. Uh, I'm going to sign off. Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it. And uh, with that, thanks.